Hey guys, welcome back to the studio, Ryan aka Bloodshot Airbrushing and we are back for the second piece in the Graffiti Project and I know this is called the Graffiti Project guys and we really haven't done much graffiti it's been kind of more of a wall mural project and we're going to continue down this road for part two, piece two I should say uh, piece two <laughs> and uh, we're going to start this one off with a uh, face Still graffiti spray bomb style, um, but wall mural, there's going to be no lettering in this one. Next one, guys, three, four, five are all lettering, so I just want to get the murals out of the way, and then we'll bang off some lettering old school style for those of you who got your start in spray bombing before you got into airbrushing. Check it out, guys. Let's get into the wall mural <laughs> of the feminine face. Check it out. Alright guys, let's get started. Mapping out my whites. And uh, my first little hiccup. Right here. No paint. Too thick. Alright guys, I did put some thinners in there, but it hadn't settled yet. The, the bottom of the cup. And uh, it just wasn't shooting. So a little bit of back pressure. Pinch that needle. Kick that air back into the cup, and it does a nice job mixing up that paint so it gets a little more, uh, well, the flow. You get the flow flowing, guys. Alright, nice and light, mapping it out. I did go in and loosely draw out some lines with my water-soluble pencil. I recommend making your mistakes prior to getting your airbrush out there. You start drawing stuff with your pencils and you have a quick ability to change things rapidly not so when you got the airbrush and the paint flowing guys and this is why I swear upon spending your time if you're using stencils do some nice stencils cut some nice stencils this one again is a very big one it's easy to do freehand there's no reason for me to make any stencils for this one and uh... Being as it's another artist's work that I am playing off of, guys, I'm only using as a reference. I'm not doing a tracing, I'm not doing any... It's it's a base. It's a base that I'm playing off with, it's a beautiful face, and... Oh, hey, check it out. Hiccup number two, guys. Pulled a little too far back on that trigger and got just a little bit too much paint. I'm not immune to these things, guys, but... I am a problem solver, so a little bit of mineral spirit on my Q-tip, and I always try to pull away from where my mistake is. I like to use my fingers to get on in there, get on in those nostrils and clean them up. No, not mine, no, not hers. Either. That came out wrong. Came out. Just forget I said that. All right, guys, back in with my whites, just blasting in these little. Little highlights, getting the brightest areas in here, building it up slowly. And if you pay close attention, you would have just saw hiccup number three. And Q. See that little Q I put there? Q for question, guys. How long do you think before this knucklehead realizes what his knuckle just did? <laughs> Alright, guys. Yeah, yeah. You see her jaw? You see that chin line? That crack in the mannequin? <laughs> Somebody's not paying attention where his knuckle was. Let that be a lesson, guys. Pay attention where your knuckles are. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm just going on in. Again, building it up slowly, guys. Don't try to get it in too fast. Now, there were a couple of you who have been asking for me to do real time. I know these time lapses are kind of hard to gauge exactly what I'm doing, how I'm applying the paint. The problem is, guys, is there is so many hours into one piece that for me to keep the whole thing real time, man, I just couldn't keep your attention for that long. Or, or, or it would be a 18 part mini series, and to, who, who's looking forward to that, man? Not, not this guy. <laughs> All right, guys, that's a lot of editing. So uh, for the first one, for mapping out my whites, I'm gonna keep this real time. You guys can check it out, see how I do. See how it gets done and elaborate on it guys make it your own just because I do it one way does not mean it's the only way it is what works for me as you see it doesn't always work me resting my knuckle for the details 
Well, this paint takes a little longer to dry. The one-shot paint. It's not like the uh, water-based, which is almost dry upon contact. This stuff sits wet for uh, sometimes a couple hours, depending on how, uh, how much you apply. So something to note, guys, if you're going to play around with these paints, and I don't do it often, this probably won't happen. And again, for a very long time, guys, it's not a request I get often to uh, airbrush one-shot paints. But hey, now I know, and the rest of you know, that it is doable. And if nothing else, guys, it was worth the, uh, worth the uh, dive into uncharted waters, guys, for some new knowledge I'm a wiser cat today than I was yesterday just cuz I'm playing around with the new paint guys teaching myself as I teach you and uh, hey he finally noticed guys what was that three minutes yeah knucklehead it was your knuckle we all know that took you long enough <laughs> alright guys who had who had two minutes who, who, who thought it would take longer <laughs> alright guys <laughs> yeah Three minutes, almost to the dime. <laughs> Alright guys, if you pay close attention to my finger here, you'll notice that bend is because I'm pushing down for air. And just tiny little increments pulling back for paint. Teeny tiny. I know a lot of you guys are visual learners, so now is the time. Watching that finger is going to do more for you than I could ever tell you. Yeah, I hope guys, I hope you're learning something from this. You know, this is this is the whole reason why I'm here and uh I'm learning with you guys. Teaching isn't the easiest thing, so drop me a line. If there's something I missed, guys, hit me up in the comments. I will get back to you. I wanna make sure I haven't left anybody out, guys. I can't have an airbrush army, guys, if you're uninformed, so feel free, guys. Slam down those comments. Slam down those questions. I will get back to you. Uh, getting a little bit onto the hair now, and this reference is going to move because it's in my white. Uh, I just stuck it right to my cleaning bottle so that it is well within sight. And if you pay attention, if you've been paying attention, Watch my eyes, guys. I refer back to that reference quite often. Yeah, maybe not so much here, guys. The hair is kind of an offshoot. There wasn't much to go on in the original reference. But uh, when I get back into the face and the muscle structures and the bone structure that is on that face, I do refer back to that reference. Um, if I was doing an actual portrait, guys, I'd probably be using my tablet to where I could zoom in and I would go section by section rather than just trying to knock it all out in one go. But I got a lot of freedom with this one, guys. This is a real fun one, meant to be playful. Not so much in the realism category, more in the sir. Realism category, sir. Yes, sir. All right, guys. What do you guys think? How's this coming along? You guys digging it? Uh, it's still pretty early in the game. Uh, believe me, there's hours upon hours ago. But hit me up with your comments, guys. I'd love to hear your feedback. There is a body line we have here on the fairing. It's going to start to get more predominant once I uh, get more white on here. You can kind of see it moving from the corner of the lip right across the cheekbone. I'm playing off that a little bit. Um, that's kind of where I put the face to know that we're going to have some light refracting there. So, I mean, that's where the ear is going to get darker. That's where the cheekbone is going to get a little darker. Um, and again, put the corner of the lip right there as well, guys. So, th these are great little tips to remember, guys. Um, when I'm working over goalie helmets, there's a lot of vents. I always try to position those vents in the dark areas of my image so when the eye is glancing at it, it doesn't pick it up so much. Same with when I'm working on gas tanks, guys. You have a double curve, which is like a ball. A single curve would be like a cylinder. Um, and if you get something too big and it starts wrapping over those double curves, it gets very distorted. 
Um, fairings are beautiful there, wide open canvases, a lot of flat areas. You can go big on them. We're only doing one side of this, but I, I love to do the whole thing. It's just such an amazing canvas. Um, but we're getting on here, guys. We're getting pretty close. I'm gonna really start hitting her heavier now that I'm pretty happy with all the definition I've got. I gotta build up some hair in the back. Uh, Pay attention to me cleaning too, guys. You will notice how often I clean that tip of that airbrush. It's quite often. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, especially with these one-shot paints, they build up. Well, quite often, guys. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to loosely map in some hair. Again, I've got some freedom with this, so there is no real reference for this part. Um, I am kind of winging it. Um, I have an idea. Uh, we do have a graffiti style that we are going to place into, into and on top of and throughout of the hair. So, again, not going for photorealism. I know I can have some fun with it. Just make sure it has a nice flow with the rest of the piece and details guys starting to push some of these smaller little details you notice the brush gets a little closer movements get a little tighter and if you notice guys most of the movements here are a sweeping action where i am moving from side to side up to down and i am only applying the paint in sort of the middle of that pass so as I am moving from side to side, I don't have the paint when I'm hitting the edges, just when I'm sweeping past the middle of it. And this is kind of the whole trick of the airbrush, guys, is the brush strokes, the airbrush strokes. Um, rarely ever do you sit there and just try to bean a whole line on there, guys. It's usually a couple passes possibly a few passes, and you build it up slowly. I know I've said this multiple times in every video, guys, but it really is. It is, uh, it's all about getting those, those shades, those tones. Build them up slowly. As you can see, I am only using white, and I already, because black is my background, and I am saving, saving some of my darkest. I still have like seven, eight tones of white, gray, and black going on, and all I've done is light shades of white. So, guys, you know what I'm going to say next. Light passes, multiple passes, build her up slowly, and once you're happy with it, then you can start blasting in the paint. And even when I say blast in, this is me right now blasting in paint, guys. So I'll hit a little heavy, I'll be a little quicker, a little further away. And uh, I guess that's that's me blasting in paint. Uh, Alright guys, just a nice, nice, nice little touch to add to the graffiti aspect, the wall mural. And uh, I think, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I think we're done with the whites, guys. I'm just going with the airbrush and just drying off some of that paint. You can see that one little drip going on down. Ah, I kind of like it. Alright guys, it's coming along quite nicely, if I do say so myself. And as I'm the only one in the room, I will. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this up for part one. Uh, number two, the second tutorial will be coming up shortly. Stay tuned, I make you wait guys. Stretch these things out. Increase your learning. Take the steps as you need them, and use them to grow. Alright guys, that's it for this one. Cheers, much love, see you in part two. And as always guys, like, follow, subscribe, thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers.